Victorian and I grew preppy and it's a privilege and honor to host prophetic breakthrough today but today you are not going to uh, hear the bishop preaching but I have a wonderful topic that I want us to discuss today and that's the woman of influence and I have the privilege to have some wonderful ladies here with me to be able to go through the subject uh, but I'm going to let them introduce themselves um, Hello, yes, go ahead. Sandra Harris. Nice go to be ahead. with you. Hello, my name is Mema Silakoy. Amen. As I was saying, I want us to look at a woman of influence because I believe that as women, we are always influencing uh, somebody, whether somebody is influencing us or we are influencing um, somebody. So this evening, that's what we are going to uh, talk about. And I want us to look at what is woman of influence what is woman of influence uh, who is a woman of influence uh, some women in the bible that have really influenced our life as individual and how can we be a woman of influence and who is influencing you so i will start with pastor sandra so what is um influence the word influence is a very powerful uh, powerful. word it's something that every day we have encounter with oh, it oh yeah you okay. know so what is influence okay. um, on your view what is influence influence means the capacity to uh build up or maybe even tear down okay. a person or a place or a thing or to develop mm. to inject or to make an impact on something or somebody Okay. That's influence. That's influence. So Mima, what, what is influence to you? Influence to me is to make an important impact on mm -hmm. someone's life. Like Pastor Sandra stated, you can make a negative or positive impact on a person's life as far as their developmental or their character. So influence is to have an important impact in someone's life. Yeah. Good. Very, very good. I, I look at the, the word influence myself and it says that it's the power to shape. And I believe that as women, we are shaping things every day. Oh, yes. We are yes. shaping things. We are shaping ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are shaping our neighborhood. We are shaping our friends. We are shaping things. And it's also the power to have an effect on somebody or something, whether good or bad. Right. You know, so whether um, you wake up in the morning as a woman and your surroundings, your family, your husband, whatever you do before you even come outside your house is an influence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Pastor Sandra, what, what do you think as w women, how uh, can we be able to influence um, things around us? Okay, when you think about a mother, mm -hmm. a mother influences her daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, a sister may influence another sister, mm. uh, an aunt, somebody in your life that injects into your life, somebody that pours into your life, somebody yes. that teaches, yes. you know, uh, a church mother, mm. a pastor's wife. These are people that, it's somebody that, a, a person can only influence your life when you look up to them, Yes. Mm. you know. Now, yes. we do have some bad influence. Yes. You know, we have some bad influence, but we're talking about good influence that, you know, so, uh, you know, but it's somebody that you look up to, and that can be in a bad way as well. So we as, we as women of God, we have to be very careful that we are influencing in a correct way. Good. So Mima, who is a woman of influence? When we say that, no, a woman of influence, mm. who is a woman of influence? Um, a woman of influence that is making an impact in my personal life mm. um, is a person that I can look up to. Okay. Um, a woman of influence, it's your, you play a major role in my life to be a woman of influence, a woman that I can look up to and say, I want to mimic mm. what she's doing. She has an important impact in my life. Uh, influence and the influence that you play in my life that you may not know about is before I would do certain things or before I would say certain things, what would you do mm. or how would you handle it? Mm. You know, and I stated before, I was having a conversation with um, evangelists in the church and I got frustrated because I felt like certain things from you wasn't rubbing off on me. And I'm like, I've been with you for 10 years. Why am I not getting certain things? So a woman of 
influence, a person that's making an influence in my life, I would say is you when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to preaching the word of God. Um, outside of the church, I would say, you know, other women that I may look up to as mothers would be like my older sister. Mm -hmm. But a person that's really making an impact in my okay. life. So I, I think uh, to add to it, uh, when we talk about uh, who is a woman of influence, um, I think that for you to be able to be a woman of influence yourself, then it has to start from you. Yeah. Right. So because right. you cannot give anything you don't have. Yes. Right. You know, sometimes we try to be uh, who we are not. Yes. Yes. No, you cannot yes. um, give anything you don't have. Whatever you have is what you will give. Yes. So for us to really qualify who um, is a woman of influence, personally, I would take it from uh, the point of you making Jesus Yes. influencing your life and you being who you are yes. not trying to um, fill anybody's shoes mm -hmm. not trying to mm -hmm. impress anybody but just being yourself, yourself right. just you know just just being you know yourself and working on yourself changing yourself mm -hmm. you know to be the better person whatever Jesus will give you whatever you have and that's what grace come in whatever Jesus will grace you with then in turn you'll be able to uh, put it out there yeah. so it's yeah. it's very important let me let me add this mm -hmm. that is so true because mm -hmm. for so many years I tried to be who I thought people yes. wanted me to be so it took me so many years to just finally find who Sandra was Mm. And as women, we do that because we play so many different parts. And, you know, we're a mother, we're a sister, we're, we're aunt, we're this, yeah. we're church this, we're pastor's wife, we're whatever. We're men, we wear many different hats. And it's, ve it's very difficult sometimes to find who you are. Yes. Mm. It, you, you don't have time sometimes to even take a bubble bath, you know, but you have to, you, just like uh, Victoria said, you have to make time for yourself to find out who you are. If God made you, you've got to go to God and find out who am I? Let me find myself. Let me, it, let me invest some things in myself. Mm -hmm. Let me in, in, in figure out who I am because I was, I, I actually was miserable when I was trying to be all of these different people that people wanted me to be. And when I found out who I was and like she was saying, found the qualities that were in myself, mm -hmm. found out what my gifts and talents was. I became an influence even when I wasn't trying to influence. Yeah, influence, yes, yeah. Yes, and I, I think that, um, so let me, let me add this, well, let me ask this. Because then sometimes we, as we were growing up or wherever we were born, wherever we come from, sometimes you don't have too many role models. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. so you don't have people that you see them doing any good thing or anything exactly. that really yeah. will also um, help you to yeah. really be who you know you think. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, me growing up, I didn't have any idea who, who I think I was. Yeah. Yeah. I was just growing up. Yeah. You know, I, did, I didn't know where yeah. I was going. I was just growing up. Mm -hmm. And so those people like that, you know, those people are like that, how can they you know some of them don't really have even a home you know some of them didn't have a home to say okay this is my home and this is what my mom's that this is what my sister that this is what my auntie does mm -hmm. you know but at least now they are like me mm -hmm. yeah. okay so how can people like that and and, and I'm, I'm i'm telling you i can see some of you in my shoes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, some of you in my shoes. I remember uh, growing up, my mom was a very, very powerful, influential woman, you know, but for me, nothing really changed in my life till I gave my life to Christ. That's the answer. That yes. was a turning yes. point. That's it. You well, know, that, that was, was a great point. impact. That was something that really turned my whole world around. around. Yeah. So people like that, because sometimes they're looking at somebody to influence them. People like that, how can they do it? Like you said, when the turning point happened in your life, when you give your life to Jesus Christ. So if, if they're looking for that impact, because sometimes, you know, like Pastor Sandra stated, we can look for certain things in certain people, but Jesus Christ has the answer to it all. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you're looking for, once you seek him, 
You know, because Jesus has already found us. Mm -hmm. I was telling somebody the other day, I didn't find Christ. Christ found me. Yes. I thought that I found Christ, mm -hmm. but I realized that Christ found Fine. me. Yes. Yes. So yes. once he's finding you and he's looking for you and you make yourself available to him, mm -hmm. then he's able to mold you. Mm -hmm. Then he's able to, you know, make you who he intended mm -hmm. you to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so my advice to them is sincerely find Christ. Know Christ. Give yourself to Christ. Yes, yes. Okay. I want this um, a question that I really want to ask is, I know as women, we all read the Bible and uh, we all have some characters in the Bible that really have been able to influence our life. I mean, I have some Bible char characters. I have a book called Every Woman in the Bible. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. And I, I read them and I, I really read the characters and what they yeah. did. Because I all, all, always think that when I'm not here, somebody also have to yes. read about me. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody yeah. have to read about yeah. me. So I read about other people. I read about even uh, not just the women in the Bible, but a person like Catherine Coma mm -hmm. and all those great women that God really used them, you know. But is there any woman in the Bible that really stand out to you, Mima? Abigail. Oh, yes. Um, Abigail stand out to me mm. because Abigail was a woman of, of influence. She was a woman of wisdom. Oh, yes. Her wisdom, and I was just reading about her um, this morning in Samuel, and her wisdom blew my mind and how she knew how to turn around an unforeseen circumstance, mm. but turn it around to make it work for her good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Abigail, to me, stands out. Well, one of the few that stand out oh, yeah. to me in the Bible is that's, Abigail. That, that's yes. a good one, because yes. you yes. see, wisdom is everything. Yes. I always pray, God, give me wisdom for ministry. Wisdom is everything. Yes. And wisdom is application of knowledge. Yes. The thing, what, how to act at certain times. Yes. Sometimes keep quiet. Yes. Sometimes talk. Yeah. Sometimes stand, sometimes sit. Yeah. So wisdom <laughs> is a principal thing. It's right. a very good thing. So yeah, that right. was very, very powerful. Yeah, right. But yeah, Sandra, yeah. anybody stand out for you? Yes, Naomi. Yes. Oh, yes. I love Naomi. Mm. You know, and I, I love the humility of Ruth. Yes. I mean, she was such a wonderful daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. And Naomi was uh, a woman that was really kind of, you know, a little influenced in her, in her, own, in her own country. Mm -hmm. But what I love about this story is that uh, Naomi lived such a life of godliness mm -hmm. that she persuaded and influenced yes. Ruth. Yes. to want to serve the God that she served, yes. Yes. you know? So that's what you call a woman. Now that's, that's influence. Yes. You know, she that's said, my true. God shall be your Lord God. Lord. I will follow you any and everywhere. That's a good, when people want to follow you, that's a good thing. Yes. yes. It's when they yes. don't want to follow you yes. is yes. when you need to be concerned, you know, but I love Naomi. And I think she was a great impact in the life of Ruth and Ruth learned and listened and listened. We go back to talking about being willing she had to listen. Yes. She had to be willing to listen. She had to be willing to learn. She had to be willing to be influenced. Yeah. Now that's another uh, another topic, but you know, mm -hmm. influence. You have to be willing to be influenced. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, that that's very good. I love that story because I believe. Okay, so this is this is sometimes even the in-laws. These mm -hmm. ladies just came in to marry their sons, yes. and their sons wasn't there yeah. no more but then the lady was so good mm -hmm. and in law may i don't call you know i call them in love because <laughs> i need them to be loved not <laughs> in law you know but it, it was just an awesome that they they even after their son wasn't there yes. they're like we just want to stay with you and ruth as pastor was saying was willing to listen yeah. because for even him to meet boaz the Mother in love oh, yeah. have to tell her some certain <clears throat> yes, things to do. Yes, but did. me, what really um, l I love, I love about the Samaritan woman yes. in the Bible. Yeah. Guess what? She didn't even have a name because she was a home wrecker. Yes. <laughs> she was a husband snatcher. Yes, she, was. <laughs> she was everything. And if you read the Bible careful, the time she went, to, to fetch the water was the time that nobody is supposed mm -hmm. to be 
in there yeah. because she know people have her name yes. calling. Yes. Because she has snatched every man in that city mm -hmm. and the, the wife know her. So she went to the pool. She went to, to fetch the water. And Jesus said, give me. And he looked at Jesus. He didn't even know who Jesus was. Yeah. But she looked at Jesus and said, this handsome man standing there. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, can I be able to snatch this one? <laughs> but then Jesus says that, give me what I, then she said, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy. Yes. I'm not worthy. Wow. Then with all the conversation that went on, what really make me know that she was a woman of influence. When she knew who Jesus was, she, okay. could, she could have said that, you know what? I know this city people. Everybody know me. Yes. I'm not going there to mm -hmm. tell them anything. I'm yeah. taking my salvation. Yeah. And I'm going to hide right. in my yes. room. And I don't want to be bothered. Good. The Bible says that she dropped everything. Mm -hmm. And she ran yes. to the city. Yes. The same man. Yes. Guess what? <laughs> she didn't go to the ladies fair. The oh. same man. Yes. She same went man. there. And I think that when she went there, she said, you know what? Mm. I know you know my story. Mm. But this time is different. Yes. yes. <laughs> this time I've seen somebody who will yes. do you better. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that all the men in the city ran to Jesus and they told Jesus, mm -hmm. we didn't come here because of her. Yeah. Mm. You know, she came and told us, but now we are here. Mm -hmm. yes. But guess what? If she haven't gone to the city and told them, come and see a man yeah. that I have discovered. Mm -hmm. And I'm challenging all Christians that are watching. I'm challenging all people. Go and tell about the king of kings, yeah. the Lord of yes. lords yes. in your life. Yes. What he have done. The influence, yes. Christ have influenced your life. Mm -hmm. Go and tell it. Don't keep Christ to yourself. Yeah. Some of us, we don't even tell anybody about him. God have done a lot for your life. God have influenced your life. Mm -hmm. And if Jesus have influenced your life, go and tell it. Be like this woman. Who ran and went back to her past, faced her past this time, mm -hmm. but didn't face it with rejection, mm -hmm. didn't face it with people calling her yeah. names, didn't face it because she wasn't worthy. Mm -hmm. She faced it because Christ was there for her. Right. Amen. And yeah. I think that is a blessing. For the Sandra, you Can have I, something yes, to add I to do. it. I, I, want, I want to flip it just a little bit. Yeah. She said something real powerful. She used to be yes. a woman of bad influence. Of bad influence, mm. yes. yes. I think about Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Now, Jezebel was mean. Mm. She was evil. She was uh, just hateful, domineering, and controlling. Mm -hmm. But she could have been a woman of great influence. Yes. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you're a woman that uh, has a very dominating character, mm -hmm. a very uh, appearing to be controlling or whatever, people can misunderstand that. You know, because that can be used for good for God. Mm -hmm. You know, this lady could have done, just like the Samaritan woman, she went back and told them, look, I used to be all those things, mm -hmm. but I am now this. You know, so the women, some of us, you know, we have our days and we have yeah. our times. You know, but we're not as, you know, quite as nice right. as we need to be, you know, mm -hmm. but Maybe God I, can change I us. I'm something. sorry. No, that's yeah. okay. no, no, that's good. Okay. That really is good. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I like what you said about the woman of um, the Samaritan woman is that, again, she did have a negative influence yeah. mm -hmm. and <clears throat> she was known to be the lady of the hour, the lady of the night, okay. but she didn't let that stop that's her. That's it, yes. When she met Jesus Christ, yeah. she did not let her past stop her right. to tell people about this King of Kings, yeah. to tell people about this Lord of Lords, yeah. and to tell people about who she just met. Right. Because in that second of her meeting Jesus Christ, her life changed. Right. Yes. Yes, her is. life changed yes, in that yes. instant. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you about something that just changed my life within yes. that instant. Yes. I no longer have a desire mm -hmm to be that woman anymore. Mm, yes. Now I have a man that I didn't even sleep with, but love me for who I am. Yes. Good. Yes. And I personally think that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus yes. does. He loves us who we are. No matter where we're coming from, no matter the, the mess that we have, Jesus loves you. Jesus cannot, nobody can love you more than nobody. Jesus. Nobody. So I'm telling you, if you, you're coming from a breaking family, if yes. you are coming from things that you think you are not worthy, you are. Yes. 
because Jesus loved you and he yeah. came to this earth just for you, just for you. So we're going to be, be here every third Thursday of this broadcast. You're going to be hearing from us and we're going to be talking about a lot of topics. We're going, but it's going to base on how can we be a woman of influence? Because I really think that as women, we can do a lot. Yes. Even at the ministry of Jesus, mm -hmm. with all the men that were surrounding her, when it came for the performance of the whole thing, mm -hmm. the women were there. Yeah. So as a woman, God have called you at this time, get up, let's go out there and influence our community, our family, influence everything around us, and always know that Jesus love you and love, love you yes. and love you. Loves God you. bless you uh, for tuning in. And please continue to support uh, Prophetic Breakthrough Ministry. We can't do this without you. So support us and we will come on your way again. God bless you. Welcome back. I pray that you were really I'm blessed by the word of God today and I just want to agree with you and pray with you that everything you are trusting God for because I know our God is able so please let's agree and pray Heavenly Father I pray for whoever is watching this show and I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever they are trusting you for for their family for finances for their help that Lord Jesus you will come in right now and touch their life that they, they will be healed in their body in the mighty name of Jesus. And those who are trusting you for financial breakthrough, that Lord, the Bible says that it's you who give us power to make wealth. You will provide every need for them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Their, their life will not be the same. And those who don't even have any relationship with you, I pray for them that through this broadcast, they will have in contact with you and you will touch their life and their life will never be the same. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I trust that you've been blessed today. And I want to use this one of opportunity to invite you to fellowship with us. On Fridays, every Friday, we have our prophetic encounter service. It's a time we spend time in prayer and in the prophetic. There's a word in this house for you. So please come on in. You are sick in your body. You trust in God for a miracle. You want us to agree with you as touching anything. Just join us and be part of it. And on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., we have a victory explosive service. It's powerful. And I want you to come with your entire family and be part of this service. We look forward to see you and be blessed. Precious friend, this is Bishop George Grandison Grethy. I want to discuss a very important issue with you, and that has to do with your soul. The Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 9, 27, that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, judgment. The Bible said there is a way that seemed right unto man, but the end thereof leads to death. Are you living for yourself or you are living for God? Today, I want to talk to you about your soul. A decision you must make today that will affect your destiny forever. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to encourage you that today you will invite Jesus into your heart to become your Lord and personal Savior. The Bible said in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. The Bible declares in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, If we say we have no sin, we are liars, and the truth of God is not in us. But the Bible declares that if we acknowledge our sins and confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. Today, you need to come to that place 
where you know and you acknowledge that you know what? I have not always lived to please God. I have followed my own ways. I've done my own things. I've lived the way I want. But that's not what God means you to do. God wants you to live to please Him. And because we are all sinners by nature, we were born in sin. That is why God gave His only begotten Son that He should come and die and shed His precious blood on Calvary's cross. In John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not die, not perish, but to live and have an eternal life. Today, I want to present Jesus, the Savior. I made this decision decades ago. And today, I'm living a full life. Hear me? If you die today, where will you go? The Bible makes us to understand in 2 Corinthians 5.10 that each and every one of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ to render an account of how they lived their life whilst they were here on earth. On that day, what will you say? You can escape the wrath of God by receiving Jesus today. I want to appeal to you, do not postpone this. Right now and right here, I want to pray this simple prayer with you. You want to say with me, God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. Ask the Savior of the world. And today, I repent of all my sins. And I invite you to come into my heart. That you will save me. And be my Lord from today onwards. I pledge that for the rest of my life, I will live to please you. And serve you the remaining days of my life. Amen. As simple as this prayer is, my friend. The Bible said if you sincerely pray this prayer with a heart man believes and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you sincerely pray this prayer, I want you to email me, call me, write to me, and text me and say to me, Bishop, I just prayed that prayer with you. I gave my life to Christ. And I will help you, send you materials, books, and send you to our website and links that will help you to grow in your newfound faith. Hear me? Jesus is coming back soon. And you don't want to miss his second coming. I pray that this short moment with you, you made a decision that will impact your destiny forever. God bless you. Get my information. Write to me. Send me an email. Drop me a text or WhatsApp. And I'll be glad to help you to continue to grow. God bless you. And bye for now.